Welcome to the Tick Optimization Toolkit Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to optimize actor tick events and timelines using my plugin. First, let's look at the map that we will be working with. On the map, there are 4000 ticking actors. Let's run the map and check how it looks performance wise. To display basic performance statistics, press the tilde key to access the console, type in stat fps, then press enter. For some more statistics, do the same for the stat unit command. You can see that this map runs in the editor at less than 13 frames per second, and the game thread takes almost 80 milliseconds. This definitely is not playable, and we should do something about it. But first, let's take a look at our actors. Half of them are cameras that are constantly following the player character. Their behavior is implemented in an actor's tick event. What we do is find a point on the player, calculate a look at rotation from the camera and apply it to camera meshes. We use two static meshes instead of one skeletal mesh to make use of the Unreal Engine Auto Instancing feature, which allows us to draw all those meshes with less overhead. The other half are simple rotating fans. The rotation is implemented with a looping timeline. There's not really much more to see here. Back to our optimization efforts. What you could do, is use a trigger on each of the actors and disable ticking and timelines if the player is outside of the trigger. I tried to do this to the best of my abilities for a fair comparison. As you can see, we're getting between 25 milliseconds when standing and 32 milliseconds when running. The 7 milliseconds difference is because of all the triggers the player is running through. There are more issues with this approach, but this is out of the scope of this tutorial. Let's get back to what we can accomplish with the Tick Optimization Toolkit plugin. First, we have to enable the plugin. Through the Edit menu, open the Plugins tab. In the Gameplay section of Installed Plugins, find the Tick Optimization Toolkit plugin and make sure that it is enabled. Now, we have to set up the player character as the focus of our optimizations using a focus component. Because we will be working with visibility as well as distance, select the camera component. Now, press the Add Component button. In the Search field, type Tick Opt and select the Tick Opt Toolkit Focus Component from the list. Compile, save and close the blueprint, and we can proceed with optimization of the camera actor. As this blueprint is a target of our optimization, we'll add a target component to its root. Select the root component and press the Add Component button. Again, in the Search field, type Tick Opt, but this time select the Tick Opt Toolkit Target Component. If we switch to the Viewport tab, we can see a sphere representing our basic optimization distance of 10 meters. We could modify it, but for this tutorial, it is fine. We can however have a quick look at the box distance mode. The box can be rotated around the z-axis, which makes it more useful but still very fast to process. For this tutorial, we will need three additional optimization zones, 10 meters each. We also want to optimize our actor when it is not visible. We will use front visibility mode, which deems an actor visible if it is in front of the focus. The other option is rendered visibility mode, which deems an actor visible if it was rendered in the previous frame. This one is a little slower to process, but can still be useful. All the tick control checkboxes are for automatically controlling the tick of the actor and all its components and timelines. Generally, this is what we want. Now, we will set tick settings for each distance zone and visibility mode. The tick interval values are in seconds and translate to ticking 20, 10, and 5 times per second. The tick interval of 0 means ticking every frame. The checkboxes are for disabling the tick, which is done in the most outer zone when the actor is visible, and in most zones when it is hidden. We want to tick the actor when it is hidden but close because it is possible to see its shadow. The last thing to do is to force the execution of the first tick. This is optional, but, for our far away cameras, it will make a good first impression. The camera actor is ready to go, so just compile and save the blueprint. Now we have to repeat the process for the fan actor. But, to make our lives easier, we can copy the target component from the camera actor using Ctrl C, and paste it to the fan actor using Ctrl V. One thing that is different, is that the fans will all start synchronized and we want to keep them that way, so the player won't know that they aren't really rotating when they're out of view. For this, we will use the sync timelines to world option, which syncs looping timelines with the world time. We also don't need to force the execution of the first tick, so I'll just uncheck this. Now compile, save and close blueprints. Let's check the results. We now have whooping 80 to 100 frames per second, but the game thread takes only 10 milliseconds. This means that we are now GPU bound and have some additional CPU time for more gameplay features. Additionally, there is only a slight increase of game thread usage when the player is running, no more the half a millisecond. This gives us a more stable frame rate throughout the game. This is all for this tutorial.
If you want to know more about the Tick Optimization Toolkit plugin, you'll find links to other tutorials and documentation in the description. And, if you don't yet have the plugin in your library, the link to the Unreal Engine Marketplace is also in the description.